The 805 Focus is brought to you in part by Nonprofit Connect. Nonprofit Connect provides superior leadership tools and resources so nonprofit leaders and board members can make valuable decisions to move their organization forward to a sustainable and vibrant future. More information on services online at nonprofitconnect.org. Welcome to 805 Focus. I'm Dr. Cinder Sinclair with Nonprofit Connect, and we will be bringing you the latest on your favorite nonprofits. So get ready to be inspired. Our special guest today is Ed France, and Ed is Executive Director of Leading From Within. Welcome, Ed. Thank you, Cinder. Oh gosh, I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, it's such a pleasure to be with you. And by the way, congratulations on your book, My Wild and Precious Life. Oh, thank you. I love uh, actually hearing friends who've read it. Oh, really? And recounting some of the stories that I know both <laughs> from talking from you and the book itself. And it's, um, yeah, it's a great, great share to the community. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. It was, uh, it was my um, COVID achievement. I wrote it right in the middle of COVID. I mean, what else are you going to do? Way, way to uh, uh, make lemonade out of lemons. Yes, well, thank you for that. So now, Ed, leading from within, uh, you know, I'm really interested to hear what's going on these days, uh, how you're recruiting for people. I just read the other day that you're now recruiting now that, you know, the pandemic is... Uh, subsided. Maybe not behind us, but, you know, yeah, subsided, yep. that's a good word. Um, so. So tell yeah. us about Leading From Within. Sure, so stepping back just a, a bit, um, you know, you and I are actually both alumni. Of yes, one we of, are. One of the programs that's called Courage to Lead, Yes. Uh, the organization that I'm really proud to now work for. Um, and what Leading From Within does is invests in people who drive and create change. Like uh, you invest said. Invest yeah. in people who drive and create change. That's fabulous. Sorry to interrupt, I just love that. Right, and, and the thing is that nonprofits and also government social services and people who are involved in civic life, what we call the social sector, this is an area that tends not to have a lot of investment in professional development, right. in leadership development, and helping cultivate people for succession, uh, and supporting people from burnout. And that's really, that's, that's the purpose of leading from within. Yeah, that burnout is so, it happens so often in that sector because people just jump in with their passion and they give it their all in and pretty soon they're kind of running out of steam. Right, I mean, we get into social, environmental, uh, economic justice, whatever of this type of work, we get into it because we care. Yes. Yes. And that passion, just like you say, that, that allows us to, to overdo it sometimes, yeah. uh, to, to neglect taking care of ourselves mm -hmm. as we seek to take care of others. Yeah. And especially for seasoned uh, social sector leaders, mm -hmm. um, you can hit a wall. Yeah. Right? If you're running a marathon, and you're hitting mile 20, yeah. well, you know this, right? Yeah. Uh, and you haven't been taking care of yourself, you're not gonna be able to finish the race. Yeah. And, uh, and so part of this work is really just to help people's sustainability you know, in their own leadership yeah. and to sustain their organizations and ultimately their, their contribution to the community. Because a lot of these kind of folks aren't used to taking care of themselves putting themselves first, not even used to thinking about that. Absolutely. Um, and it, it, the classic adage, right, of uh, when you're on an airplane, which some of us are starting to be again, yeah. um, and, and they're going through the safety announcement, you know, you have to put on the oxygen mask yeah. first. Yeah. You can't help anyone yes. if you're not in a position to do that. And, um, and that, that's really important. And, and especially when you think of being of service to the community broadly, being of service to your team members mm -hmm. and everyone that you're engaging with, 
being your best, being at your best, yeah. investing in yourself and having support to invest in yourself. It's pretty crucial for how positive of an impact that you can make. Yeah. And so this is something that is really a, a gift to be able to, to work on through Leading From Within uh, and through our, our programs and through our alumni communities. You know, I re listen to you say that, I remember when I first heard about Courage to Lead. And I heard about it because I was the CEO of an organization and, and one of my senior staff came and said, oh, there's this Courage to Lead and no, 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 she's telling me all about it. And I'd really like to do it. Well, of course, you know, let me write you a letter or whatever we have to do. And, you know, and she said, you, you might like it too. Oh, <laughs> that's nice. I'm way too busy, but, but you go, you go and it'll be great. So that sort of lack of a tendency to sort of take care of your own self as the leader, I'm sure is prevalent. Absolutely. I think that's part of something that is really challenging for all of us at all levels working uh, in, in the social sphere. The cause is so great that being able to budget time mm -hmm. for the care and feeding of our, our staff, of our kind of core capacities, uh, and certainly our own leadership arc, sometimes aren't there. So if there's one thing that I and I think all of us at Leading From Within really want to advocate for, mm -hmm. it's prioritizing budgeting for professional development. Yes. Uh, yes. And, and leadership development and that type of planning and support because most all the causes that we're working on aren't going to be completed they're not going to be addressed and resolved <laughs> right. uh, a year or two years from now. Yeah. You know, this is, this is a long game. So how do we make sure that we're healthy and, and capable uh, and have a robust organization and team to, to do this? Um, and so, so we lead by trying to offer uh, different leadership development programs and supportive communities uh, for leaders to be able to continue to offer their best and also help ideally make an impact in the culture uh, of uh, yes. leadership in our community. Uh, we want people to be able to be open, to be collaborative, yes. to hold space for trying things and sometimes failing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's innovation, yes. right? We have to yes, be able yes. to try things be less judgmental, be more supportive. These are all kind of really big, broad concepts. Yeah. But um, we're extremely fortunate that after over 10 years of running Courage to Lead, mm -hmm. 20 years of the Catherine Harvey Fellows Program, mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're in our fourth cohort of Leading for Community Impact. We're getting into the, the, the sixth cohort for uh, the Emerging Leaders Program. Mm -hmm. we, we're in a position where with over 500 alumni, we can start to actually make positive shifts in the culture of uh, the philanthropic and nonprofit community. Yeah, that, that is so, so, all right, so here is leading from within, almost like an umbrella, and then under that are all these, pro so Courage to Lead, Emerging Le Leaders, Catherine Harvey Fellows, what, what? And Leading for Community Impact. Yeah, Leading for Community Impact, is that relatively new? Uh, it, it is our newest program. Okay. Uh, we are recruiting for our fourth cohort. Golly. Uh, and what's really important is whatever the program name, now there's different emphasis and focus okay. where we bring together a cohort of community leaders, uh, usually for a year or more, to come together over that, over that time span and to take on concepts uh, that they can really reflect upon and then integrate into their work, right? So you and I uh, participate in a program that's called Courage to Lead, mm -hmm. um, which is really to help um, uh, as a renewal program, mm -hmm. to help encourage uh, leaders who've already been doing this work, mm -hmm. but to, to, to not lose heart and to kind of find their, their second wins. Yeah. For, for lack of a, a yeah. broad, you know, uh, yeah. to, to be simplistic about it. 
uh, our Emerging uh, Leaders Program is more help kind of build some of that skill set, that confidence mm -hmm. um, and encouragement to take on uh, increasing levels of responsibility uh, and roles within their organizations or whatever, their, wherever their career might take them. Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to do this as a program where you've set aside time over a long span of a year and you have a cohort that's supporting you, that, mm -hmm. you're, that you're really bonding with, um, I think is really, is really a, a meaningful uh, vehicle to support individual leaders. And then of course we want to create a community of, of lifelong learning mm -hmm. where we always value uh, new concepts, uh, openness, and uh, helping improve the entirety of, of the work that's being offered to this community. And so the, the one, what is the focus for, what did you call it, Leading for Impact? Yeah, so Leading for Community Impact, Community Impact. is a program that we, is based in Santa Maria. Oh. And it serves leaders for Northern Santa Barbara County, so specifically Santa Maria, Lompoc Valley, San Ynez Valley. Uh, and, and that program is really addressing a need where there hasn't been as much investment in, in leadership for the social sector uh, in northern Santa Barbara County. Mm -hmm. There's also not as robust networks um, of people being able to, to know each other, to rely on each other. Oh, interesting. And so launching a program and also an alumni community for northern Santa Barbara County, I think has been really important to, for us to make a contribution to organizations doing work uh, and organizations starting. Uh, especially in, in the community of Santa Maria, which is now the largest and fastest growing city in our county. Wow. So, so let's take Santa Maria. How do you go about sort of finding people that, that want to join the program or letting people know about it? So our, all of our programs are invitational. So that means we make a lot of invitations. So we, we, we put the, for example, right now, we're recruiting for Leading for Community Impact. Okay. And we're putting this out to, to the world, right? Yeah. We're, we're putting it out as news releases. We're putting it out within the different uh, nonprofit resource network, uh, the Santa Barbara Foundation's uh, Collaboration for Social Impact, the different outlets. We want people to hear about it, but we also want to ask people uh. to consider. So this morning, uh, I and a few of us, because I see all of our names and I see movement on, on a, a spreadsheet of 300 people, and we're talking to alumni, and we're talking to different contacts that we have to try to make a personal ask. Who do you think, Cinder, that you've worked with could benefit from a year-long cohort-based leadership development program? Um, and then as we start to get, either they reach out to those folks, maybe it's somebody that they work with directly, uh, or an organization they work closely with, mm -hmm. or uh, as they refer uh, names to us, we reach out and we, we actually also this morning hosted an, an information session ah. in Lompoc. Oh, um, wow. So that people uh, who we asked to come out can, can hear a little bit more about this offering. Um, because it's not every day that you're offered uh, a, a year-long uh, leadership development opportunity. Right. And it's hard to make heads or tails of it. And so we have to kind of do the careful work of, of recruiting a cohort. Um, and I think that uh, it's a real special opportunity to be able to do. I'd uh, say. It's really cool to be in a position to, um, to communicate with people who are doing the work. Yeah. And uh, to, to try to offer them something that can, can help them sustain that work and, and maybe even uh, continue to step up uh, their contribution and their, and their roles in the community. So how has your approach worked uh, or changed now that the pandemic is a little bit Whew. subsided? And yeah. what were you doing before that with Zoom, I suppose? And oh, yeah. da, da, da. So as I mentioned, we're extremely fortunate to be where we are, that we have over 500 alumni from our programs. Mm -hmm. And we also, when we talk about the, the Leading From Within network, we actually like to think of kind of a affinity group of folks who may or may not have gone through our programs, oh. but are interested in the type of offerings and the type of connections that we're trying okay. to, to foster uh, within the leadership of nonprofits and the social sector more broadly. And, and so we put all of our programs on pause. Oh, um, okay. 
I'll get back to that in, in a moment. We were able to continue some programs, uh, but we put everything on pause and we started focusing on what are the needs of the leaders in our network right now? Because mm. people are facing, for many, the most challenging time oh, in their career. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, one example of what we offered, and of course we weren't meeting in person, yeah. uh, one example of what we offered was executive coaching. Ah. You know, in a lot of uh, this type of work that we do uh, around the country, um, great programs will look at all the different offerings that they can do, and one of the most significant is executive coaching. Yeah. Uh, when you can have a thought partner yeah. to help you chew on maybe one of the biggest challenges that you've ever had to deal with, Right? Or some recurring uh, challenges that you just don't know how to move forward yeah. on. Uh, it can be transformative. Yes. And so we were able to, to support um, something like uh, 70 of our, our leaders to do executive coaching to help work through some of the challenges that they were wow. facing. So a lot of the challenges, I'm sure, specifically had to do with the pivoting and being creative and what do I do now? Oh, uh, the, the range. Um, we thought, we, we did kind of do our best to do what we call sense making uh -huh. through the pandemic because again, at the, at the outset, it was very different than where people were at a month, two, three months in now. How many months are we? Yeah. Right? 16 something, Yeah, right? something like that. Um, and so we, we would do our best to kind of shift offerings. We had a number of different adaptive offerings that we'd make via Zoom. Uh, we helped underwrite people through different meditation courses. We helped uh, do uh, different gatherings of alumni communities. Uh, we would bring different topics uh, forward to engage in. Um, we had a couple gatherings to celebrate uh, uh, leaders coming into the community. We had, in fact, uh, as, I, as I call that for your book, <laughs> uh, we had a virtual, uh, you know, book launch oh, uh, event. That, that's that right. You, that that's you, right. Uh, that, I really appreciated that. That was fun. Um, but uh, yeah, the the types of challenges that people faced, in some sense, were a lot of the regular challenges that we've been through. Mm -hmm. That a lot of a lot of which just really got brought to the surface. Ah. So some challenges that people have been facing, like organizational culture and organizational challenges yeah. um, weren't that different, just magnified yeah. once things switched uh, to remote work slash pandemic, mm, remote yeah. work, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I, I think with the pandemic to, to, to offer an opinion, yes. I think uh, what the pandemic largely did was really highlighted longstanding problems. In, ah, in our community, gotcha. It wasn't like a whole new set of problems that we never fig never heard of or figured. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. Uh, but in, but instead, we realized some some longstanding issues that we we really need to take on. As is clear with uh, this newfound um, push for for civil rights and, and justice, diversity, equity, yep. and inclusion and access. Uh, I mean these these things didn't <laughs> they're not new. Right. Um, but how important they are to take on yeah. uh, really got highlighted. Um, so it, to back up a, a second, I will say it's been, it's been quite an experience for all of us. Um, and I'm so thankful to be in community with different social sector leaders like you uh, <laughs> and like so many. Um, to, to help each other yeah. you know, through these challenges. One, one other really kind of key thing that kind of flies under the radar that, that, that we, that I like to say that we do, but there's not a lot that we actually need to do anymore. And that's uh, what we call uh, peer learning oh. or leader circles. So I mentioned this coaching. Um, our programs like Courage to Lead, as, as you know, we've had our, our, our leader circles. Mm -hmm. So these are just peers that we're able to check in with. Mm -hmm. And we're supported to do this regularly and get together and not just chat, but in a real kind of methodical way, mm -hmm. really deeply share yeah. what 
what we're struggling with and not even get advice. Right. Just really to be heard. Yeah. Um, which sometimes is, is the best way to really process things. You know, I still work with, uh, I still meet with my leader circle. In fact, we just set another date and we meet on a regular basis and look how long it's been. How, yeah, how many years has that been then, right? Like, is that right. uh, uh, seven years? Something like that, yeah. Right on. Yeah, that's, uh, that's very common actually. Yeah. And, and that program started in Courage to Lead and that, that was so beneficial mm -hmm. that we've extended that and been doing trainings for mm. all of our different alumni groups. Yeah. So that, that so that those peer learning experiences are something that we've been able to offer through and of course that, this happened fairly well over Zoom. Yes, um, yes. Not for everybody, but for a lot of folks. Yeah. Um, and we've been able to to offer that as a as sort of offering where we can support something, but really it's it's peers supporting peers yeah. um, throughout throughout the pandemic. So, okay, we're, we're coming up to the end of our interview, but I'm wondering if there's anything else that you'd like to share. Uh, like, let's just say someone's listening and they say, hmm, that sounds good. I wonder how I could get involved. How could I find out more information? Well, great. Uh, leading from within, three separate words uh -huh. with hyphens, leadingfromwithin.org. We'll try to put something uh, on, on the video here. Yeah, or, uh, we will. And going on to that main site, you can see our different programs mm -hmm. and you can see our other offerings and helping make a connection of offerings that we're putting out to the community, to community leaders who could really benefit from them. Um, that would be a great way to, to get involved, to join us at some of the different uh, info sessions or upcoming events that we'll have. Um, you know, the interesting thing about Leading From Within is we're not trying to broadcast our message. Right. We're, we're backstage. Yeah. We're here to support organizations like so many that you're interviewing mm -hmm. that are doing amazing work in the community. Yeah. And, and we really are, are just here to be the, the professional and leadership development uh, kind of arm to, to support their work. And what a blessing you are to so many people and more to come. Thank you so much, Ed, for being with us and for your leadership and all the good work that you do. Thank you, Cinder, for the opportunity and for all that you do. And thank you for joining us on 805 Focus, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>